Well, congrats on the album. Thanks. Um, it's a, yet another tremendous ACDC record. Yes. Love the companion video, by the way. Yeah. But I was just curious, and I guess Black Ice was also recorded in Vancouver. Why Why Vancouver? It's a great room. Yes. That warehouse studio, we really like yes. playing in there. It's a, just a good environment, a little funky enough to be comfortable and... Uh, yeah. And and the sound comes right back. Oh, yeah, actually, you know, it's uh, yeah. we've done. We've had the other side of the coin where we've been in studios. It's just a bear to try and get get it right. So yes. when you found a for, uh, a room like that, yes, it's good to go back there. It, ma- it makes it it makes it all so much easier, mm-hmm. you know, because this cliff says you know you get into some places and you spend and you know m- you know sometimes you would be spending you know you know, you know I mean we you know been in times where you know they've spent weeks just trying to get the drum sound right or yeah. you know getting the guitar sounds you know the way you know them you know yeah. and then sometimes actually yeah. try and i'm going to go try another studio altogether. Yeah, yeah. but brendan has his own in atlanta now you didn't don't like the room there in atlanta well i don't think he owns that anymore he had it b- before i don't but he, you know he used to use that a lot uh, the, the place that he had in atlanta but i think they either they, they they were selling it, the owners or something. So yeah, but um, oh, but he worked there. We you know with bl- with black eyes with us, and, and I mean, and, and again this time. So he seemed very comfortable with it. He well, he knew that we he, he's going to get the results. You know, so so now this record obviously must have been um, bittersweet to make without your brother. Yes. Uh, but in a, in a way, from what I understand, it was with your brother because some of the riffs might have been things yeah. that you guys worked on many moons ago. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, uh, ideas we've had all over the years, you know. I mean, the two of us always done this. We, you know, you, there, there was always riffs that we had. There were good riffs, and we never used them. You know? And that was the same for every album. So... You know, it was always a bit new, you know, you might have a new idea, but you went, oh, this won't work with this. Remember this what we had there? And, you know, you we always borrowed bits and pieces from, you know, from the past or, you know, you know, something you made two years before or, or, or the new thing that you were working on. So, you know, and that was, you know, as Malcolm said, you know, you, you know, sometimes it's, you can be sitting there scratching your head for days trying to come up with something new. He said, we may as well just look, look and, you know, in what we've done before and, you know, and go, well, we, hey, this might work. Yeah. And, it, and, and it does, this. or if it didn't work, it, it gave you the, an idea that something like that may work. So how how from these older riffs were they something that you had recorded on what cassette back in the day if they were from the yeah set? there's a lot of cassettes uh, you know DVD stuff a lot of dats um, you know a lot of a dats you know so there's quite a bit of stuff yeah who who is the compiler of all that stuff do you keep track of all that well at the time Malcolm did you know because Malcolm was always very organized I was always disorganized you know he worked you know he always you know, kept his stuff neat and tidy, wrote it down, you know, um, I was always the, the, the total opposite. I mean, when the two of us worked together, it was always, he was keeping track of everything, and, uh, you know, I just, you know, I just sit and play guitar and go, oh, here's a riff here, and that, and Mal would record it, you know, and he kept track of it, you know, and he was always giving me a pile of stuff and going, here, Hank, here's all your, your ideas, <laughs> you know, he compiled them all for me, you know. So yeah, uh, so he, I, I had to get Stevie, our nep- the nephew who's doing Mal's role now. I mean, he helped me organize me to, you know, you know, to, to uh, you know, yeah, you know, put put stuff in order. You know, so. so Stevie is George's son. No, my oldest brother's uh, 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 son. Steve, Stevie was my eldest brother. Yes. I thought George was the oldest. No, George is. I've got well, it was six brothers all together. You know, I was the youngest of seven. You know, bo- of seven boys, and and we, we and I have one sister. So, I didn't realize your family was that big. Holy cow! So yes. luckily, you have a, a, a full stable of possible musicians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and there was never no shortage at a party. Put it that way. You know. <laughs> so 
when Mal started getting ill, when that was what all, almost all the way back to black ice. Black ice, yes, yes. So, you know, he he knew at that time, you know, when we were doing black ice, because I thought at the time, you know, do you want to be doing? Do you really want to be working? You know? And he said, Yeah, I want to. I want to do this. You know, and he was even the one that suggested, you know, at the time, you know, you know, if we could get Brendan O'Brien working, you know because he had heard stuff he'd done so and uh you know in the end it was the same with Turin. you know he said you know yeah i'll keep going as long as i can do it yeah yeah and that's what he did so now um play ball yeah play, we're gonna, let's talk about the songs play ball is the first single yes couldn't come out at a better time and the baseball season and the uh, beginning of football yeah uh, and the video by the way is very smart yeah. <laughs> cheeky yeah. cheeky yeah 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 Whoa. So uh, let, let's talk about that that tune. How did that one um, come about? Uh, it's mainly the, the the title. You know, it was just a good. You know, it always sounded good. You know, the, you know, let's play ball. You know? And uh, f- from my way of thinking, it was always the same as, you know, you know, you rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. It's you know the equivalent of you know. And I mean, and it, and it always did sound strong, you know. I always thought, why did anyone never do it before, you know? Everyone, you know, because it, you know, to me, it always it, it was a great, great title, yeah. And you always knew when you saw the the, the baseball, you know, when they, when you heard that phrase, you it just seemed so so natural, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's play ball, yeah. <laughs> So what you were shooting the video in England, and I guess was that sort of the first that maybe there was you, you kind of thought, oh maybe something's wrong with Phil because what Phil didn't make it. Well, getting to him there to, to do the album was quite tough too, you know. So, and uh, he, uh, yeah, he, his behaviour has been a bit bit strange, you know. So, because when, when we're doing the album, one minute he was coming, next minute he wasn't, he wasn't. coming coming he wasn't uh, just erratic yeah so it took quite a while to get him to 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 the studio i mean when he got there he did his great job you know but uh you know he, you know he, it's not the film that you, you, we've known all over the years you know and uh when we got to uh you know when we had he knew we were do, doing you know that we we're promoting it the album and doing uh stuff he, and uh, again, he said he'd be there, and no, he didn't. Uh, you know, you know, he, he last minute again, he didn't show. You know, so it's crazy because like, yeah. that's your gig. Yeah, it's yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I know, but he's, you know, he, he's got himself into a, some sort of situation. He's got to yeah. sort himself out. Yeah, it's he's, not going to happen overnight. You know, he's he needs he, uh, he needs uh, to, he needs to sort himself. Yeah, yeah. we were going to work, going to move forward, and, mm. and that's it. Which is which is good. It's what you should do. Yeah. And you know, Dave Grohl wants to be your drummer really badly. I don't know oh, if you. Know. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm. You know, because he is a, a, a great drummer. He's got. You know, he's been with us. You know, I mean, we, we go go way back. You know. Mm. Yeah. But you know, it's it just it it was just making it difficult. You know, for us, what do we do? You can't plan anything. You can't. Mm. You know, if anyone says, "Well, we you want to do this," it was making just too too difficult to go forward you know it's too bad i'm sorry all right let's talk about the title track uh, rock or bust, bust. I, know, I, you, I know you also did the video for that one i didn't get to see that um but uh yes tell us about rock or bust yeah, well rock or bust yeah, it's a good good strong title and again uh, it's got the word rock in it you know <laughs> and uh <laughs> Because everyone says, "Geez, how you know, how many songs have they got called with rock the title in it?" Uh, you know, but they got to cut us some slack. I mean, we've made sixteen, sixteen albums, you know, and we have been rather, you know, I, I suppose, you know, you know, have used rock quite a lot. But it, it's a strange thing when you take away that word and you put something else in this place, or you try other phrases, you know, and you go, but it just. That seems so comfortable when you mm. when it's singing it, you know. So it, it, usually, when you if you change the whole phrase, you you and, and you hear something, man, yeah, it just doesn't sound as strong as rock or bust. I also like the tune "Misadventure." Misadventure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to talk about that? <laughs> he wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but it's a, it's a that's a great up 
rock song. That's a really good. I love that yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, it's got good, uh, good rock. A good riff. title, huh? Good, good pump up title. Yeah. yeah. And it's a bit, you know, uh, I suppose it's our stab, um, a little bit a mini James Bond in a way. But, uh, you know, well, the title, you know, it's, I always liked all those early Bond flicks, you know. You know and, and you know, I mean, they were a bit tongue in cheek, you know, when you, when you got the, you know, the, the, some of the names of the, you know, that, the, uh, you know, they came up with some of the, some of the ladies, as Cliff said, Miss Money Penny and, you know. <laughs> This is Pussy Galore, and you know. Uh, that was my nickname in high school, Pussy Galore. <laughs> you put it Pussy Galore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, the woman was so beautiful, and I, I, mm-hmm. I like wanted, wanted to be her. Yeah. Um, story I had heard was what a, an amplifier caught on fire during the making of this record. Yeah, it did. That's Brendan really. happened to point it out. We were playing away. Angus was playing away. So. Plume of smoke coming up behind him, and Brenda's goes, "Excuse me, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess. Oh, it's fine. It'll be. <laughs> You're on fire." <laughs> no, no. And I said, oh, "I thought it was just my playing." You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, what song was that? Do you remember? Oh God! Uh, I, I it was early on in the proceedings. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it might have been rock or play bus. ball or play or ball. Play ball was a fit. Yeah, you could have been play ball. One yeah. of those two. Yeah. Now, that's got to go down in your memory bank of like the most yeah, creative, right, yeah. most spinal tap moment. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, but he was there. It was lucky he as he was going. <laughs> <laughs> come on, and he he come on across. Yeah, he come running across. You know. yeah. You're like you're like thinking, oh yeah, he likes this. Yeah, he's like, he, doing yeah, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Keep going. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm rocking. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> baptism by fire is another one. Yes, good, good sound and title, good hard rock, yeah. and uh, you know it, it was a, a you know good riff, yeah, very strong riff. And anyone who heard the riff said, "Oh, that's, that's a great, great rock riff." And and it was just you know, uh, you know, when you put the two together, it just seemed to match so well, you know. Yeah. So and I've always, you know I always liked that that phrase baptism by uh, I always thought it's a good good strong title yeah. when you were thinking when you started out did you ever think that 40 years later you know things would be as important you the acdc would be as important a band as as ever well, uh, it was, i didn't really, really think about it it was not that long-term thought process went into it was just doing yeah. it uh at the time and and, and yeah yeah we was it was just on the road all the time and doing it and doing it and doing yeah. it and it was just like not really thinking that yeah. far ahead. And then when you're young, you, you know, life's an adventure. So, uh, and the, all those early years went so, because oh, mm. there was a lot of work. You, you were touring, playing, you know, and when you when you, you weren't on stage, you were in, a, in, the, in the studio. You know. When you think back, what was, like, your favorite memory? My favorite memory? Um, geez. I'm sure there's more than one. Yeah, it's a ton. Yeah, it's, it's always hard to mm-hmm. to think and and say, oh, is that? Yes, yeah, when you sit and look yeah. back at it now, it's like, yes. damn, that was a long time, you know. So yes. many good memories. But when you, was there a specific show or maybe a a moment with a fan that you know you'll cherish? Um, oh, there's a lot of gr- there's a lot of great things you know that you had. I remember when we were playing out, and uh, it was a Bill Graham show out. And, Oh, day on the green yeah. Uh, yeah and we were playing yeah and uh, i remember somebody grabbing me to interview me as we came off our bus and the guy said well what what would you call an acdc tour and i said a highway to hell you know it's uh yeah yeah you, you, you just have those yeah and that all that was good because it stuck in my head you know <laughs> yeah. how old how old were i mean this were both of you how old were you when you knew that you wanted to be a musician so, uh I was thirteen, yes. when listening to you know uh, uh, that nineteen sixty three. So uh, yeah. listening to all the radio, the stuff going on, and Stones and everything. I said, yeah. got my first guitar. So I knew that at that point that's that's yeah. what I wanted. What about you? Well, I was playing guitar pretty young, you know, me and Malcolm, and so we we knew what the guitar was and knew you know, uh, how to play it. Um, 
But I guess yeah, probably more my in my teenage years is when you I you start I started getting real serious about it, you know. And you used to have a little crystal radio, and I'd plug it in at night and tune in, you know. And I wasn't such a fan of the top forty stuff, but you know, I I liked uh, you know the you know the harder blues thing, you know. And there was a lot coming, especially the sixties time or the late sixties, you know. You know that you started hearing music a bit heavier, yeah. You know? So yeah, you know, that, that was that was exciting time. Yeah, you know? I know the blues has played uh, such an important role in in so many. You know, I mean, yeah. look the Stones, the Beatles. Yes. You know, the blues and the Chuck Berry. You know, yes. especially you know. Yeah, but also at, I think at that time that there was a vib- vibrant. Yeah, a lot of uh, bands. You know, even before, just before the Woodstock era, and that. You know, you got bands like coming who were coming up like ten years after Janis, Janis Joplin, the all. Yeah, and you would hear because it had, yeah, it 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 had shades of the past, but it had something new to it. You know, with their own twist on it. Yeah, so. I remember Alvin Lee. I was such an Alvin yes. Lee fan. You know, coming home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Does the relationship between um, the bassist and the drummer yes. different? I, is it different when you're like friends with the guy as opposed to somebody that maybe you know you don't know for that long? Is there that? Do you I need- guess if you well, if you know the person and you play with them, you know what's ha- what's going on. Yes. You know what to expect, how they play, and all that. So and that takes time, obviously. Mm. Yeah. So and if you you know you just meet someone fresh and cold and you go to play with them, you just don't know what to expect and you just look for that. Do you remember how many singers you auditioned uh, before you found Brian? Uh, uh, it wasn't uh, a huge amount, was uh, it? Maybe, I don't know, six or ten or something. Yes. Like yeah, because a lot of people it recommended people. You know? Yeah. Um, but Brian's, Brian's name had come up very early. In this mm. First time I heard Brian's name was Bond, had mentioned. Because Bond had toured through through Britain, and the band they were in, they were the support band for the uh, for the band Brian was in. Brian was in, Brian was in a band called Geordie, and uh, and and Bond was in an Australian band that was the, the support act. You know. And Bond was telling me and Mal this uh, story. He, he he saying, "Oh, this guy, he was singing. You know, it's like a little Richard song. He was screaming, and uh, he said, oh, he was." He was all over the place, and he said, and then suddenly he was on the floor with the microphone, screaming, screaming at the top of his lungs and rhythm, you know. And Bond said it was the wildest show he ever saw in his life. And then, but then apparently, the, he said, he, what Bond said he didn't know was at the end of the night, the you know, ambulance had pulled up, the, and Brian had appendicitis. He <laughs> 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 wheeled off. <laughs> but Bond said, it, hey, he kept going, he said it looked great, you know. So that's the first time I ever heard about Brian. I mean, you know, look, let, let, let's realize that, you know, your band has been through, you know, some pretty intense things, you know, uh, and, yes. and, you know, starting with Bon, you know, yes. when he passed. Yes. Um, did you think at that time that maybe mm. it was not going to happen anymore for the band, that that was it? Yeah, I think that, yeah, it was. Yeah, you get, yeah, because, you know, Bon was the big, you know, he, he was a full on front man, you know. Plus, he had this great character. You know, I mean, he, he lived that rock and roll. He, you know, he he just lived that rock and roll mm-hmm. life. You know, yeah. I mean, what with Bond, what you saw is what you, you what you got. And uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty tough. You know, and you know, but Mal, you know, being Mal, you know, he 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 had said to me, "Well, look, you know, after you know after we'd been." Uh, his funeral and everything, and talk with his parents. Mal said to me, "Come, we'll get back to writing, and that's all we'll do. Just, you know, just keep writing." And it was great therapy, you know. kept kept you going, and uh, you know. And then we get get, get the, guy, the the guys in, you know, and just we didn't really focus, you know, on you know what you know about uh, you know if we were going to get singer or anything. Just focused on the songwriting. And then when we started getting songs together, you know, and that's when we said, okay, you know, we'll, we'll have to look, you know. Yeah. And then that's when people started, you know, giving those names. You know. I wanted to find, I try to ask everybody, like if you weren't, if you weren't doing what you're doing today, what would, 
you oh, God. what would you be doing with your life? <laughs> no idea at all. It's been a, yeah, it's a yeah. lot. No clue at all. Mm. I hate to be vague about it, but really, truly, I, I don't. Like when you were coming up, did you what were what was your first job? I was an apprentice toolmaker. Yeah. I had a school at sixteen and went straight into yeah. that. I knew I didn't want to do that. After about a year, yeah. I lasted in that, and then I had an opportunity to try music full time. Yeah. So when did you first start playing uh, professionally? 17. I use the term professionally very loosely. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few gigs here and there, you know, but uh, that's what I've, that was what I was striving for yes. at that point. What about you? Well, my first job was, uh, the, you know, it was uh, working in a, a print, printing factory. You know. you, 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 I was covered, in, well, I used to know was every day I'd come home covered in ink. It would be everywhere on me. Yeah. And the, and the the term for as they used to say, oh, especially when you were the junior, and as a junior, they they just go, oh, he's a printer's devil. That was the term for you, because so. hmm. you got all the dirty jobs. You know, you you, know, you were down there clearing out, you know, all this lead and everything. Yeah, but uh, you know, yeah, for, you know, I was glad to, you know as soon as I was playing, you know, you know, and then getting. You know, getting paid for it, I thought, oh, Jesus, this, this is great. You know? <laughs> Anything but that job, you know. <laughs> now, by the way, uh, this is funny, but the, did you realize that today the guitar that John Lennon wrote, Paperback Writer, on yes. is being auctioned? No. 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 Would, is that ever something? Would you ever buy a guitar like that? or? or it depends how own. good it is, actually. <laughs> but if it wrote, but if it, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember what it was. It didn't look yeah. like an. It wasn't an acoustic guitar. That's for sure. It was definitely an electric. That it was pretty beautiful, actually. Like a, kind of a peach color starburst. Yeah. Was oh. yeah. it like a full bodied thing yeah. like this? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what he played. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, I know Malcolm always with guitars. He used to always. He wa he wanted ones with their own character, so he might see a couple of the same video playing now. Oh, no, that one's got so got something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was always looking for a guitar that had its own character, you know. And yep. he would find them. He would always manage to pick out something that was a little bit different from the normal, you know. Do you have names for your guitars? Names. Uh, <laughs> same break, bastard. <laughs> 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 Oh, when it's playing well, I, I kind of give you a, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're the most beautiful thing in the world as a guitar when you're playing well. And when it's crap, you go, you bitch. You know? <laughs> right, we do a holiday show. It's called Hard Drive's Nightmare Before Christmas. And we're always looking for uh, great tales of holidays past and or maybe not so great tales because maybe you <laughs> got a shitty present for Christmas or a got mad at your brother and had a fight with him because he got the toy you wanted or uh. or maybe dad was trimming the house and fell off the ladder from you know putting the lights up or, uh. I don't know you know crazy stories like that so uh, you, do you have a or it could be a fun story like maybe remembering yeah. what your first um, favorite gift was as a yeah. child or whatever but I remember once when we had two Santa Clauses show up you know, as kids. You know. you know, there was like one, it was like my, my, my father was had planning to put on the, 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 you know, the, you know, the Santa gear to sneak in to put your, put your present. But he, what, what he didn't know was he, he, his stepbrother, his, he, he, he uncle, and he, he of course got drunk at the pub and then he showed up as Santa Claus too. <laughs> <laughs> so you got two. <laughs> and I dressed up as Santa Claus one year when my kids were very little and scared that crap out of them and they burst into tears. However, <laughs> not exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Poor kids. How old were they? About two and four at the time. Uh, like <laughs> well, <were> they, yeah. <laughs>